Mm, I'm lurking in the shadows. <laughs> Just kidding, I could never be an assassin. I have the agility of a bull in a china shop. When you think of assassins, you probably think of agile, methodic, secretive characters that hide in the shadows. But as it turns out, some of the deadliest assassins of all time were not only not that secretive, but they had some of the craziest methods for carrying out their work that you will not believe. Here are the 10 deadliest assassins of all time. Number 10 is the axe-wielding bear. 17th century Swiss political leader Jörg Jenestich's murder might be the most bearish assassination in history, uh, pun intended. Jenestich was a vicious Protestant leader with contempt for Spanish Catholics. He even pinned his political rival Pompeius von Planted to the floor and murdered him. Well, flash forward 18 years to Carnival in the town of Kur, Jörg is drinking with his entourage all in costume, so no one thinks twice about inviting a man in a bear costume who's wielding an axe to the revelry. York tried to shake the bear's hand, but it was Rudolf von Planta, son of Pompeius in disguise, who shot his father's murderer in the stomach, and yet Yenistich still grabbed a giant candlestick and was able to fight back before eventually just dying. You know, I get it. The guy was in a bear costume, all snuggly, snuggly. Oh, <laughs> how cute. But the guy was holding an axe. Yep, nobody would have saw that coming. Big sharp axe in your face. <laughs> Number nine is the exotic dancer spy. World War I in Europe was an incredibly dangerous place to be, and in the rationale of the time, no place for a woman. But don't tell that to Margaretha MacLeod. This German intelligence officer is considered to be the greatest woman spy of the 20th century. But what's most interesting is that she went by the name Mata Hari, an exotic dancer who performed the Dance of Seven Veils across Europe for English and French soldiers. MacLeod had a Dutch passport, so she she could freely travel around wartime Europe, taking many high-ranking officers as lovers, many of whom she murdered before stealing military secrets. Hari ended up passing along her stolen intel to the Germans that led to the deaths of almost 50,000 French soldiers. Even after she was caught as a spy and executed, she was a flirt, blowing a kiss at the firing squad before they shot her in 1917. Okay, I know you're gonna kill me, but I still look good. <laughs> Number eight is the She-Tiger. Just like Hari, this person used her femininity and sexual prowess to fight for Basque independence from Spain in the 1980s. Known as La Tigresa, meaning the She-Tiger, she was a dedicated commando in the ETA, which stands for Basque Homeland and Liberty. She was responsible for 23 deaths, specifically in 1986 at the age of just 20, La Tigresa set a car bomb in Madrid that killed 12 civil guards, another Another car bomb that killed five civilians and seduced a police officer in order to gain access to police stations before shooting him and another five police officers. In 2003, she was sentenced to 2,000 years in jail, but in 2011 apologized and unbelievably was released early in June of 2017. Yep, that's right, she's on the streets right now. Enjoy sleeping tonight. <laughs> Number seven is the Iceman. Richard Leonard Kuklinski is considered America's most prolific contract killer, nicknamed the Iceman, because he froze his victims to hide the time of their death. He was only ever convicted for two murders, but claims to have killed up to 250 people over 30 years. That means one murder every six weeks. Kuklinski was the go-to killer for the Gambino Mafia crime family, and unlike many other serial killers, he had no routine. Specifically, he would use guns, knives, bats, lumber, tire irons, ice picks, fire, cyanide, and even his bare fists that he claimed he did for the exercise. Oh yes, getting a good one in today. The strangest thing is that when he wasn't murdering people for money, he was a family man living a quiet life in New Jersey. He was even an usher in his church, but his luck ran out in 1988 when he was sentenced to two life sentences, but freely spoke about his crimes up until his death in 2006. There you go, just makes you wonder who's living next door. Hmm. <laughs> Number six is the super killer. 
Agent 47 from the video game Hitman was actually inspired by Alexander Solonik, known as the super killer to the Russian criminal underworld. As a Soviet Special Forces member in East Berlin, he was tasked as an assassin of NATO diplomats. Believe it or not, what landed him in jail was not murders, but a rape conviction. And he ended up breaking out of the Siberian Gulag and became a hitman for hire. He immediately started taking out high-ranking Russian mafia bosses protected by armies of bodyguards. And he'd either do this as a sniper from great distances or show up at nightclubs and kill his target and crew with dual pistols blaring. Police eventually caught up with him in 1995, but he ended up taking out five cops with a hidden machine gun before eventually returning to jail, escaping again, and created his own 50-strong assassin squad in Greece. Eventually, he was found strangled in Athens in 1997. How appropriate an assassin was assassinated. That's just irony. Number five is Caesarea. In 1989, Palestinian political organization Hamas's chief weapons maker, Mahmoud al mabou shot an Israeli soldier in cold blood. However, Israel had the last laugh in 2010 after Mabou's body was discovered in the luxury Al Bustan Rotana in Dubai. His cause of death was a brain hemorrhage, which seemed improbable, so Dubai investigators looked into it. What they discovered was that 27 people from Mossad's Kesariya unit flew in under different passports and left soon after. A German immigration attorney ended up discovering that multiple people in the Caesarea forged identities and documents to acquire German passports used to enter Dubai without notice. Seriously, these people must be really good at what they do because I can't even bring a dang bottle of water through the airport. It's like I'm a criminal. Number four is the cartel hitman. Martin Corona's book, Confessions of a Cartel Hitman, released in July of 2017, details his violent life as an enforcer for the Ariano Felix organization. It was this organization that inspired the movie Traffic with their sadistic methods like Mexican stew, where they stuffed men into 55 gallon drums of hot lye. Corona was recruited to David Popeye Barron's death squad in 1993 after he saved Ramon Ariano's life fighting off 40 gunmen sent by El Chapo Guzman with a single AK-47. This guy's like an assassin Rambo. He tried to retaliate against El Chapo inside the Guadalajara airport but missed. But he still continued onto a long and lucrative murder for hire spree on both sides of the US-Mexico border. He would often wear disguises to trick his victims like nerdy glasses, but in 2000, he turned on his bosses working with the California Justice Department to dismantle the AFO. See, as it turns out, you can't judge a book by its cover. You never know what they're capable of. <laughs> Number three is the camel. Jesus Ernesto Chavez Castillo's street gang, Barrio Azteca, were the Juarez drug cartel's go-to hitmen until 2014. That was until Castillo testified against his former boss, Arturo Gallegos Castrellan. Chavez confessed to 800 murders but says that he lost count and claims to have had a daily murder quota to instill fear in cops, politicians, and the people of Ciudad Juarez, the murder capital of the world. His confessions came after Mexican police allegedly tortured him with electric shocks to the testicles. But killing wasn't enough to please his boss Castellan, so he would often dismember and behead his victims, leaving their bodies in public places to make sure he made headlines. Unbelievably, since his imprisonment at the end of the drug cartel war, the Juarez murder rate dropped by two-thirds. Dang, that man was busy! I mean, I believe in being good at your job, but... That's taken a little too far. Number two is the political assassin. Photographer Burin Ozbiliki's stark image of Mevlut Mert Altintasf with a gun and his finger in the air while Russian ambassador to Turkey Andrei Karlov lies dead beside him was declared 2016's Photo of the Year. The Ankara Modern Arts Center was hosting an exhibition created by the Russian embassy on December 19, 2016. Ambassador Karlov was a few minutes into his speech about improving strained Turkish-Russian relations 
when a man in a suit shot him nine times in the back, shouting revenge for Syria and Aleppo. The gunman, who engaged in a 15-minute shootout with police before ultimately being killed, was Al Tintasf. He was an off-duty member of the Ankara Police Riot Squad and a member of the Syrian branch of Al-Qaeda. Man, even police are assassins. You can't trust anybody. And number one are the lady killers. Kim Jong-nam was a playboy living in exile when he was suddenly poisoned in the Kuala Lumpur International Airport in Malaysia on Valentine's Day 2016. His assassins were Indonesian Sati Aisya and Vietnamese Don Thi Huang, who sprayed the poison in his face, claiming it was a prank. The reason that they were so unsuspecting was because Miss Huang was wearing really casual clothing, specifically a sweater that said LOL on it. Well, getting sprayed in the face with a VX nerve agent isn't exactly LOL. It's more like OMG. So those were the 10 deadliest assassins of all time. And if you guys enjoyed this, remember to give it a big thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications by clicking the little bell beside the subscribe button so that you never miss a thing because I release new videos all the time. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.